in today's video, I'm gonna put some new resin by Frozen to the test. So before I start using the test thing, let's talk about some of these prints I have here and the resin itself. Now this resin has the RPG on it. If you don't know, that's a role-playing game where this resin is designed for tabletop gaming where you can print your miniatures out of it. If they accidentally fall off, they don't break. And that's kind of the point of it. So it's, you know, if you have your miniature, you spend all that time painting it, you don't want it to just break the first time you accidentally drop it. Now, if you're like me and you're not just interested in printing miniatures like this, but you actually like printing bigger models like this guy right here. Now this big guy is Mojo from the X-Men. And if you haven't guessed, he's not one of the good guys. He is one of the bad guys. And Mojo right here, I wanted to print him with these different resins to kind of show off that it can do big or small with a lot of detail and especially it being flexible, I have a lot more confidence that this model can actually survive where, like I said before, the red clay is a color that I love, but these little spikes and these big things in the red clay, I'd be a little bit nervous about it breaking where with this stuff, well, we'll find out, but I think it's going to last a little bit longer or have a little bit less uh, breakability, especially on his hair right here. We've got these like crazy hair that's also uh, a bunch of cables that can flex a little bit more before it breaks. So it's a lot more durable of a big model like this. I don't like painting my models. I just like doing it in the color. So for the big blob right here, I did that one using the frozen ivory. Still a great resin, not gonna be flexible like these ones, a little more brittle, but still a fantastic resin and print some beautiful results. All right, and I think we've waited long enough. We can make it to the main event, but real quickly, I wanna talk about these parts right here. So what I have in each one of these bundles is there are these little dog bones right here, which are designed for tensile strength. I've got some round bend tests, which are designed for bending things, but it's round. And then I've got some flat ones here again for bending, but it's round. Now, these things have all been printed under dimensional accuracy where I calibrated everything using boxes of calibration. So when I measure these, they're going to measure at less than 0.04 millimeters out of spec on any given piece. This is just to make sure that as we're testing this, we're testing it uh, fairly across the board. And to start, we're gonna do the smoke resin and I'm gonna do the round one. This thing is tested to do two speeds. It's gonna do a uh, fast, which is gonna simulate like a uh, impact and then a slow, which is, you know, you're breaking it slowly just to see the different results. And sometimes when these things break, they break with some force. So we'll have some safety glasses on. So with the test set up, I'm just gonna hit go and it's gonna do a quick. And there we go, that broke pretty fast. Uh, again, that fast speed, things do break pretty, pretty quick. Looks like that one broke at 32.9 pounds force. Now the distance, I'll have to get that later. So, but first we're just gonna go through and I'm gonna break a couple of them. We're gonna do two of each, uh, too fast, too slow. So let's do the next one. Ooh, that one actually shattered quite a bit. Pieces went everywhere. I'm gonna have a hard time vacuuming the floor when this is all done. And that one did at 31.1. So actually less force, even though it seemed to explode with more force. Now we're going to do uh, the gray right here. So let's do the regular RPG. Let's put that in there and hit go. Ooh, that, see that bent quite a bit more. On that one, we got 33.6, but if you noticed a lot more flexibility, so definitely the gray material seems to do a little bit better. Now I have noticed this before, the darker resin is, the less it kind of cures on the inside and the softer it's going to be. Uh, and that's true with any resin. So let's just give this another go and hit go. Oh yeah much faster on that, or much, much longer on that one. Uh, 32, 32, so not uh, not as good as the previous one. All right, let's do the brown now. It's be interesting to see. Let's see if we get more bend out of it or not. Go back to our starting position and hit go. That's uh, closer to the white, 32.7. All right, and last one. This is for the fast, then we'll do the slow. That one bent a little bit more than the white one did. and. 36.3. All right, so for the fast break test, this one's definitely winning for how much pound force it took, but the gray is for distance. Again, I'll have all the actual data at the end of the video. Let's move on to the flat test. Put that there. Don't forget my glasses. And go. That one went 53.7, so a little bit more. These flat ones, I guess, are a little stronger. Let's do one more just so we can have a little bit of an average. Ooh, that shot out. Ooh. 36.1, there's some inconsistency here for sure. All right, let's go. Ooh, so that bends quite a bit. And real quick, these have all been cured for the same amount of time. I did five minutes per side, and I also heated them up to uh, 90 degrees for about 10 minutes before I cured them. And I did it all of them the exact same way. So there's no inconsistencies there as well. So we're dimensionally accurate and we're cured the same way. And go. 
That broke at new record, 47.7. 47.7, new record. Moving on to the beige. One, two, three, go. Ooh. Wow, that shot. I'm gonna have like dents in the walls. New record, 51.2. This, this, this stuff is hard. All right, let's go again. 52.2. So it's very good results on the beige so far. So far this, so far this one's winning, uh, I'd say. And so real quick, what we're looking for is not necessarily always the most bend and not the most force, but like a good balance between how much they'll bend before they break and of course how much force it takes to bend them. So with all these tests, we're gonna figure that out, which one wins, but yeah, let's keep going. And now we're gonna do the slow tests. Same thing as before, two tests a piece uh, going slow. And we're gonna start with the round and then we're gonna go to the flat. So let's get going. Now the slow test is much, much slower than before, so it's gonna take a little bit longer, but we're gonna get a lot more bend before they break. In fact, on some of these, they may not break at all. That one definitely broke. All right, we're sitting at, so far, 29.5. All right, let's go to the one more. Go. Now what this does, it puts one pound of force before it starts measuring, so we make sure everything starts at one pound. That way we get at least some consistency. That's just going. That took a long time to break. Let's see, and it broke at 31.7, so it took a long time to break, and it broke at 31.7. All right, so these little things right here are designed to pop off if it gets the wrong kind of pressure. So we'll see if this thing breaks before the test piece gives up. Yeah, that's not, oh, there we go. 31, so not the winner yet. Is it gonna break? I don't think it's gonna break. I think my test is gonna, yep. So this one actually survived the first bend test. These little things right here are designed to kind of pop off. So yeah, we got one full thing. Maybe we'll come back to this one and try it again. It's kind of hard to straighten back out to do another test, but as we know, it actually survived the test. So there we go. All right, let's go for the beige. The round test on beige. Oh, that broke. <laughs> and real quick, the one that didn't break got to 38.5, and this one that did break got up to 31.5. So. I would say now this guy's definitely winning, the uh, traditional one. But these are doing pretty good. Let's go again, see what we get. Oh, it's bending, oh, there we go. 29.8, uh, not so good on that one. All right, we're down to the flat tests, and let's get rocking. Now these ones are gonna take quite a bit more pressure, they're a little bit bigger uh, than the round ones. So let's see. I suspect a few of these won't break, uh, that one did. At 43.9, that's a lot of pressure. You gonna break? Uh, I think it's gonna break. With some force. Uh, no, I don't think it's gonna break. That's a lot of travel. Nope, it's not gonna break. So this is the second time that this resin has actually survived the brake test. That's two for it now. All right. I think maybe it'll win on pressure, but definitely not on distance. Oh yeah, we won on pressure, almost 50 pounds. That's a, that's a lot of pressure. All right, we're going again. Almost 50 pounds again, so pretty consistent on that one. And now we're gonna do the tensile strength test. Same thing as before, we're gonna start with this fast and then we're gonna go to the slow at the end. Two tests per resin and then we'll see which one is the winner. Oh, all right, 98.5. That, that almost maxed out my machine, so let's hope that the rest of them aren't quite that strong. All right, let's go again. Oh, there we go. Ooh, 100.07. So we actually went past the threshold machine. Now the threshold, it does have a safety limit in there, so we can go past that, but. Moving on to the gray resin. And also I lied, my max threshold is 200 pounds, not 100 pounds, so I'm definitely safe. Let's keep going. Slightly lower than the other one. So, so far on tensile strength, this guy's winning. Let's move on to the beige. First test with the beige, let's see how it does. Definitely one on that test. Now let's do the slow. This one's moving at 20 millimeters a minute where the other one was running, I think at four, 400 millimeters a minute. That one went 89.7. That one did 82.1. All right, let's try it. The standard gray RPG at the slow speed. 75.8, test two. We got up to 66.5, not a lot of uh, strength there, but it definitely ran a lot longer than, than the uh, snow one so far. And the very last test, we're gonna do the beige on the slow tensile strength. And one, two, three, go. Ooh, 
decent amount of pull and we did almost 89, almost 90 pounds. So pretty strong actually. And the final test. Let's see if it's gonna do around that 90 again. 87.4, so very consistent. All right, so my take on this one before I crunch the numbers, which is gonna take me a few hours though to the magic of editing, you're just gonna get them here in just a moment. But I'm thinking that the beige right here is gonna be the strongest. It's going to take the most amount of pressure before it breaks with a fair amount of flexibility. The regular one is going to have the least amount of strength uh, before it breaks, but the most flexibility and that the smoke is gonna sit kind of in between the two. But let's crunch the numbers and find out for sure. All right, so it's been an undisclosed amount of time and let's look at the data. So looking at this charts, the blue line, the load, this is it, the pounds in which it broke. Now this, these tests are kind of thick, so don't consider these as like minis or minis are much thinner, so they'll break with less pounds. But these particular tests took, I'd say in the low 30s, all the way up to 36 being the winner on the beige two. The red line is the distance in millimeters in which it broke. So you can see here the gray definitely traveled a little bit more, being a little bit more bendable, but not having quite the same endurance. Now if we go to the slow tests, overall we're a little bit less load when it breaks, um, but the distance traveled has gone up by quite a bit. Over 12 millimeters of distance on the gray. Remember, that's the one that didn't actually break. It just kind of bent. We've got one anomaly here on Smoke 2, which probably broke a little bit early, uh, given the first one was at 53. In the tensile fast, um, kind of same thing as the tensile strength, you know, the, the pull test. The gray definitely outperformed everybody on that one. And as far as the distance traveled, the gray also did really, really good, um, having three and four millimeters distance travel on the, the tensile fast. And the tensile slow, interesting, the gray took a big hit on one of them. It did pretty good on the other. And across the board, everything broke at about the same distance. Nothing was really going very far when I was going slow, which is interesting. I thought when I was going slow, it'd have more time to stretch, but really interesting. I wasn't expecting that data. All right, and looking at the final chart here, what I did is I just averaged out the data and I scored them according to kind of who won. There is 12 different categories, so there's 12 different possible points one could win. And here's the data down here at the bottom. So the OG Gray ended up winning with four out of 12. The Smoke did the worst, only winning one out of 12. And the Beige took second place not far behind the gray at four out of 12, which again is pretty impressive because generally this red uh, type of resin is always quite brittle and a little bit difficult to work with and it being performing almost as good as the gray is pretty awesome. Now, of course, you're gonna, if you're gonna end up painting these, I guess you wouldn't really care. You'd probably just go for the one that's gonna perform the best, the gray. But if you like doing stuff like me where you start, you like to use the different colors and, and just kind of have fun with it, then these all perform pretty well. Looking at the smoke, one out of 12, it may seem like it's not great, but if you look at the data, sometimes these things are losing by very, very little, or they're only really losing because one of them happens to do really good, like, in, for example, in the distance here. Yes, the smoke lost this one, it didn't get a point, but it did significantly better than the beige. Uh, in other categories, it didn't do that much worse than the beige here, but it also just didn't win. So it's not necessarily, this pointing thing is just kind of fun, but it doesn't really show the true story. You got to look at the numbers, but the numbers are here for you to look at. So, you know, pause, rewind, whatever you want to do to get the data you want from this particular resin uh, side by side competition review. I don't know. All right. And I think that's about it for this one. Now, again, please like, subscribe and share this video and comment down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm get this video going. And this video does well. I can do more videos like this uh, for testing resins. And I think over time we could get a pretty good resin database to see what works and what doesn't. And I think you know what I'm going to say next. As always, thank you for watching. What? Have a good day.